Hello everybody, my name is Simon and in this video I'm going to show you how to create this cool timer effect in Unity where you can stop and play again and stop and play and stop and play how much you want so without further ado, let's get right into creating this timer <laughs> So we're going to begin by creating the canvas. So we go to the hierarchy, right click, go to UI, and then we can create a canvas. Right click on the canvas, go down to UI, and click image. So now we're going to adjust this image, re uh, resize it, reposition it until it's in the right position and of the right size. And now we can change the color to something like this kind of gray color. Yeah, that looks nice. Now we right click on the image, UI, and click text. So when we click on the text, we can input some text in here. The text that I input it doesn't really matter, we will change it later with the script. But for now, we can just type in 00, zero colon 00, zero colon 00, zero. So the first is going to be for the hours, the second is going to be for the minutes, and the third is going to be for the seconds. So let's make this text more visually appealing. Let's change the font to this Roboto Bold font that I have imported. You can now tons of great fonts from the font.com. Just make sure that the license fits your project. And I want to stretch this text box out so it's just a little bit smaller than the gray box around it. And when we've done that, we can increase the size of the text. So we make it this big, it looks pretty good, like that, cool. So now I want to align it in the middle, so I go here and click this. So now when it's in the middle, I just want to change the color to make it fit the background a bit more. So now I just want to change the color of the text to fit the background, so I click on this color picker over here, and then I click on the background, and voila! Now the text has the same color as the background. So what we want to do now is to actually apply a timer to this text. So we click add component, type timer, new script and create and add and now we double click on the timer script to open it in visual studio if you're using visual studio you don't have to worry if it takes some time for visual studio to open it usually takes a long while so just be patient i'm actually going to go and grab a glass of water and see if visual studio is downloading when i'm back well it seems like it is that's nice so now we can start doing the code so we'll start by creating a reference to the text from this script. So we type text with a capital T, and then add a space, and then we type text with a non-capital T in the beginning. Add a semicolon, and now we see that we get this red squiggly line under text. That's because we have added a new using tag up here. So whenever we want to access the text UI component, or any other UI component, we need to type using unity engine.ui. So when we save, we can see that the text no longer has this very irritating red squiggly line under it. So now we can go into the void start function and actually automatically get the text component from the text game object. So we type text equals get component add a lesser than and a greater than sign and within those we type text with a capital T then we have parentheses and a semicolon so now whenever we start the game this text component will add automatically get inputted into the timer script that's cool so now we can modify the text by typing text dot text equals citation marks semicolon and within these citation marks we can type something like Hello. Control save, head back into Unity, and now click play. And as we would expect, the text now says hello. That's cool. So when we head back into Visual Studio, we can now change the hello text to a timer. But before we do that, we actually need to get the time from somewhere. So we create a new variable up here, and we call it something like the time. So down here we type the time plus equals, which means that it will increase every time the update function updates. So the time plus equals time dot delta time. 
Cool. So now this number is equal to the time that has passed since the play button has been pressed. If we, for let's say debugging purposes, want to make the time speed up, we can create a new float up here called speed, add a semicolon, and multiply time and delta time by speed. But there are two things that we need to do to this float. One, we need to make it public so that you can change it and see it in the inspector. And two, we want to deflate it to one so it's always one when we're not changing it. So we type equals one here and here we type public. So now it will appear down here in the inspector and we can change it if we want to something like two. But for now we'll keep it at one. So as I previously said, we want the seconds, the minutes and the hours. So let's create a new string called seconds and it's going to be equal to parentheses the time add modulo type 60 dot to string opening parentheses citation mark zero zero and a semicolon after so let's quickly go over what modulo does so modulo basically gets the remainder of a division so in our case we have the time we divide it by 60 and modulo gives us the remainder of that division. So now we can change the text the text to seconds, like that. Save and head back into Unity. So now when we click play, we should see the seconds appear here where the text is. So we click play, and yes, it actually works. Cool. Now we can add the minutes and the hours. So we head back into Visual Studio and copy this. Paste it above and call this minutes. So now we need to change some code here because if you go down here type minutes plus and then we can add this colon and then plus down here it's just going to duplicate the seconds that's not what we want we want one counter that counts minutes and one counter that counts seconds so let's do that right now so head back into Visual Studio and here we need to do some calculation so we need to calculate what 60 to 60 times 60 is. So 60 times 60 is 3600, so let's type that here, so 3600. And now we need to enclose this in parentheses, and after the close in parentheses, we need to divide the whole thing by 60. So now if we head back into Unity, click play, we can now see that we have a seconds counter and what we think is a minute counter. But since the times are burning so slow, we can't see if it's working yet. So we will console play mode and change the speed to something like 10. So now we can see that time part is way quicker, but we have a problem. The minute counter increases right when the second counter hits 30. That's not what we want, so let's fix that bug. So what we need to do is to type math with an F after dot floor and now we when we save it and get back into unity we can click play and watch the timer work as it should so now when it reaches 60 it starts over and the minute counter goes up by one exactly as we want it math.floor is kind of hard to explain but what it basically does is to round the value you type in here so now we still have the hours left so we will create those now so you go down here type string hours equals parentheses new parenthesis the time modulo and remember we need to do some math here so let's do that now too so we type 3600 times 60 which is 216,000 so let's start that out here 216,000 so let's copy that and paste it in here fix this and now add a closing parenthesis. So now when we divide it, we need to divide it 
not by 60 but by 3600 and before we forget we need to add math dot floor in front of this so now we still need to type dot to string here and then and add parentheses and within the parentheses type zero and zero and add a semicolon after so now we can just delete this comment we can type hours plus citation marks colon plus minutes plus colon plus seconds cool so now when we head back into unity and click play we can see that this time it goes up just as it should that's really cool we can even change this time to something like 1000 that's extreme but let's just do it for debugging purposes and we can see at the time goes up just as it should with the seconds with the minutes and the hour we can decrease it back to something like one and everything works perfectly but there's one more thing that we can do and that's to add play and stop buttons to this timer so let's go into the script again and create two new functions so the first is going to be called click play add parentheses add curly brackets click space and now we're going to create the second function by just copying this and pasting it and we'll call this something like click stop so now we need to create a new boolean that decides if we want this timer to play, be playing or if we do not want the timer to be playing so then we type bool which is short for boolean and then call it playing so down here in click play we type playing equals true so it's going to play and down here in click stop we type playing equals false because when this is called we want the timer to completely just stop so now we need to go into the update function and create an if statement so we type if parentheses playing double equals true and then we add curly brackets around this code like that and now we can click save so the last thing we need to do is to create buttons and to link the script to these buttons so let's go to the canvas right click go down to UI and click on button and on the bottom we can go to the image component and change the source image to none I think just the square looks much better than the default unity UI so I'm going to use that and I'm going to change the background color to this gray by using a color picker and then I'm going to change the text to something like play and I'm going to change the font to Roboto Bold and now I click on this color picker over here click on the background to get the correct color and just change the, this, this text to play with capital letters increase the font size and voila we have a little button so we can just position it some, um, somewhere around down here nice and copy it and position this one over here but the, both of these are, are a bit too big so we can just make them smaller like that and like that cool and now we just change the text of this to stop with capital letters instead of play so now the last thing we need to do is to add these on click events to the buttons so on this start button go to on click events click this little plus sign and now we drag in the text from the image which is the text that is the timer down here we go to no function over here and go down to timer and click on something that should appear but isn't and i think i know why it is not appearing we should say there are the functions that we created but we forgot to make them public so let's go back into visual studio and here before void we will type public and type public down here too save and head back into unity and now we should see if we go down to timer here that we can select click play you should do the same thing for the stop button so click on this plus drag the timer down there 
click on no function, go down to timer, click, click stop. Awesome. So now if we click play, we can see that we can start and stop the timer. And if you want to continue the timer again, we can just click play and it starts from where it ends. So what you could do now is to go and add a restart button to this timer. I'm not going to show you how to do it, you will have to figure that out on your own. Because the way, the best way to learn, in my opinion, is to do it yourself. So now you can just use the things that you learned in this video, and maybe use your past experience, to create a reset button for this timer. That's my challenge for you, and if you completed it, you can just leave a comment saying, I did it, or something like that. So that's basically it. Please leave a like if you liked the video, and please consider subscribing, because if you subscribe, you will see new videos when they come out, and you will support me and this channel. And if you have some feedback on this video, please leave a comment and tell me what I can improve or what I did good, or just comment anything that you want to comment, basically. So yeah, have a great day and bye!